Don't you just love a cinnamon bun? Well, I know you're going to love my version because it is a giant cinnamon bun, perfect for a weekend brunch. And it all starts with that soft, enriched dough. So I have three and three quarters cups of all-purpose flour already in my mixer. And I'm going to add to that two tablespoons of sugar. The dough for a cinnamon bun isn't very sweet. It's actually the filling that gives it its sweetness. I have one packet of instant yeast, and that's the equivalent of two and a quarter teaspoons. The nice thing about instant yeast, you don't have to dissolve it in liquid. You just put it right in with your flour. A teaspoon of salt. I'll just put it on the other side of the yeast. And for the liquids, I have a combination of milk and water. So this is half a cup of cold milk. Now, yeast comes to life just above body temperature. So to warm up this milk, I don't bother putting it in the microwave or heating it up on the stove. I just run some hot tap water and I measure half a cup of that. There we go. And then it's best to just give it a little test. And so if you feel it's slightly warm, then you know you have the right temperature. I'll add two eggs. And I'll start the mixer on low speed, let the ingredients combine a little bit, and then I'll gradually add half a cup of softened butter. And the butter's unsalted. Here's the dough after about a minute of working in the butter. And you can see it's soft on the top and dry at the bottom. So I'm just gonna give it a little flip upside down. That way it can work more evenly. And if you don't have a mixer, you can mix this in a bowl by hand and then turn it out onto your work surface. And you wanna knead it for about five minutes if you're doing it by hand, three to four minutes if you're doing it in the mixer. There we go. You can see it's a very soft dough. And that's okay, don't be tempted to add extra flour. That's part of what makes cinnamon buns so delectable. That combination of the eggs and the butter in the dough is what makes it soft and tender. We're not making sourdough bread after all. And now you scrape this into a bowl. Even though it's sticky now, after proofing it on the counter for an hour and then putting it in the fridge for at least six hours, but you can make this 24 hours ahead of time. Chilling the dough makes it easier to handle when it comes time to roll it. The real reason I like chilling the dough is so I can plan ahead. That way, I can make the dough the evening before I want to roll and bake my giant cinnamon bun. Here's the dough after rising overnight, and it really does firm up nicely, even though you can see how it's lifted. So I'm just gonna set this aside because I have to get my cinnamon filling ready. Simple combination, half a cup of butter, a full cup of light brown sugar, and a tablespoon of cinnamon. Soften up the butter. All right, in goes the sugar. Cinnamon. All right, now that this is blended, it's time to roll out the dough. Have a little dish of flour handy. A little flour on top. And you can see with the cold dough, it's not sticky at all, so it should be easy to handle. And what I'm looking to do is roll out a rectangle that's about 12 by 18 inches. The other advantage of this chilled dough is it has less of a tendency to spring back on you when you're rolling. It really stays in place. Okay, that feels good. Now, the next step is to spread that cinnamon filling over the entire rectangle. 
And if you wanted to turn this recipe into a batch of regular cinnamon buns, it would make you 12 individual cinnamon buns. You can use a pastry wheel or a knife to trim the edges. I do like to trim them when I'm making a giant cinnamon bun. That way you get a little more precision when you roll it. Because this next move is the fun part. A little different than a typical cinnamon bun. So normally, if you are making individual cinnamon buns, you would roll this whole sheet up, then cut your cinnamon buns and put them in your pan. This time, I'm going to cut the piece of dough into four long strips, all about the same size. And then I'm gonna start with one and roll it up. Oh, and I should say, if you like nuts or raisins in your cinnamon bun, well, you could sprinkle them on at this point. Now, I'll take this first thick cinnamon bun and then just tuck it underneath the second piece. Rolling, see what's happening here? And then again, tuck it underneath. You'll never see those end pieces. <laughs> This is a great thing to make with kids. Won't they just love this? I've got a nine inch springform pan and I've greased the bottom and sides and I'll press this right in. And I find what you need to do at this point is just really squish it right down. There we go. So I'll cover this with a tea towel and I'll let it sit for an hour. Now, just as a note, you will see that the center of the cinnamon bun rises up a little higher than the outside part and that's factored into the recipe and it looks impressive once it bakes. After that hour, you pop it into a 375 oven and it takes about 50 minutes, five zero minutes to bake because that giant cinnamon bun has to cook all the way through. Then I'll cool it for 30 minutes and I think topping it with a glaze would just make it brunch time special. And Check this out. Look at that giant cinnamon bun. Now, I've had this cooling out of the oven for 30 minutes, so I can really smell the brown sugar in the cinnamon. It's a little warm, but just the right temperature to put on a finishing glaze. So first thing, just in case there's any sugar on the outside, I loosen it from the pan. Really, when it comes to brunch, I love how there are no particular rules. So do you want to serve this to start your brunch or do you serve it like a cake to finish your brunch? Really, it's up to you. The glaze is super simple. A cup of icing sugar, two tablespoons of milk, and a splash of vanilla. And I just give this a whisk with a fork because I like to use my fork to drizzle it. I like to put the glaze on when the cinnamon bun is still a little bit warm because then it kind of weaves into the crevices in between all those layers. How inviting is that? Absolutely delicious. And the trick to eating it, well, you could peel away on the outside, but I like to cut a slice. So with a giant cinnamon bun like this, you can turn a regular weekend brunch into a special occasion.